Hello everybody and welcome to another EU4 exploit guide. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do all 7 custom nation specific achievements easily through the use of exploits. I'll be doing a lot more detailed guides on this channel both with and without the use of exploits, so be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the videos that I'll be releasing. And if there's enough demand I'll remake this video without exploits. Each of the achievements will be timestamped down below in the description so please feel free to jump ahead if you need to. Without further ado, let's get into the video. There are 7 custom nation specific achievements in EU4 and to do any of them you must have the Eldorado DLC enabled. This DLC enables the use of the custom nation designer mechanic and today we're going to be using this mechanic to do an exploit that allows us to go over the custom nation point limit in a variety of ways that makes these achievements rather easy to obtain. Even with the cheating, some of the achievements are more difficult than others so we'll be covering those at the end of the video and in more detail. Custom nation point limit is based on the difficulty you select in the options after entering the single player menu. Each of the achievements in this video require the player to be below a certain threshold, however by changing the difficulty level and using this exploit to go over the custom point limit, we'll trick the game into thinking that we are within those achievement limits. I'm going to show you guys the exploit first so we can speed through each achievement guide without going into too much detail every single time. To start, create a custom mission and click done. Then navigate to any button on the UI, like the badge in the top right corner, and press shift and right click at the same time. Click the interface GUI button, this will bring you back to the menu. When you're in the start menu, shift right click and press the interface GUI button a second time to open a second set of windows and refresh the menu again. Now as you cancel out of the first two windows, you'll see that the custom nation button in the bottom right corner of the screen has reappeared. Click it and modify your custom nation. When clicking modify, some players may experience a crash. If this happens, retry the process after restarting the game. Make sure not to close out of the center menu box just yet. From here you can change your ruler stats. Make them immortal and give them strong traits. Customize your ideas the way you like, and give yourself all the land that you desire. When you're satisfied, enter your save file name into the box in the center of the screen, and click Start Iron Man. Load into the game and you're good to go. Once you click Cancel in the center menu, your game will crash, but you will be able to relaunch the game and play as normal. Now let's get into the achievements. Probably the easiest of the achievements, Where Am I, requires the player to be a native council New World Nation with the random New World feature enabled, using a maximum of 200 custom nation designer points and discover all New World provinces. Reportedly, sometimes every province in the random New World is already discovered, so the player immediately gets the achievement when loading in, but with this exploit you can do it more reliably and in a matter of a few minutes. Firstly, we'll generate the random New World and then go to Options and turn off Terra Incognita in the menu, otherwise you won't be able to select any provinces when creating your custom nation. Create your custom nation and conduct the first part of the exploit and begin building your custom nation. You'll want to pick somewhere that is closer to the colonizers than far away from them, and an area that has a higher amount of land and development, just because there is a limit on how far from your capital province you can select and add provinces to your custom nation. You'll want to take colonists and colonial range in your traditions just so that you can begin colonizing and reach those faraway provinces and islands right at the start of the game. Also make sure your ruler is a 666 immortal so that you can generate points and take attack faster. It may help to give them the incorruptible trait just to limit the amount of corruption from too many territories modifier. And it doesn't really matter what you take for the rest of your ideas unless you intend to play out the campaign as as soon as you get exploration to discover the provinces, the achievement's done. Now grant yourself as much land as you possibly can and start the game. You'll want to leave a few provinces adjacent to you uncolonized so that a colonizer, most likely Portugal, can colonize them and you can reform your government. Alternatively, you can take admin tech and just eat the penalty from institutions, but it's just easier to wait for the colonizers to appear and finish a colony adjacent to you and click a button to catch up on tech immediately. Once you've got exploration and quest for the new world enabled, send your conquistadors and explorers out to discover all of the provinces and you're set. The next achievement on this list is Ideas Guy. Starting as a custom nation with the full 800 points, but no more than 3 total development, have a monthly income of at least 500 ducats. I've covered this achievement before in this channel, and there are a lot of ways to achieve it rather easily. I'm going to cover two of the best strategies in my own experience after doing this achievement a few times in testing. For this first strategy, it's also possible to get the achievements from Humble Origins, First Come First Serve, and For Odin. Make sure your custom nation difficulty is set to very hard with a 50 point cap to enable from Humble Origins, or 200 to enable the others. 
For the first strategy, we're going to be using Siberian Frontiers to expand rapidly throughout the New World. Select three development province in the New World, preferably not too close to the Mexicans or Incans, and conduct the first part of the exploit. For your traditions, take May Establish Siberian Frontier, and Number of States. In your first two ideas, take Yearly Corruption and Colonists. The states and corruption is to combat the corruption from too many territories that you'll endure. Without them, you'll make very little money and it'll be hard to invest in buildings to reach your 500 ducat goal. For the rest of your ideas, you can choose to take things like production efficiency, trade efficiency, goods produced, extra merchants or other economic ideas, or strong military ideas. I usually opt for military ideas to compete with and take land from the Europeans. Castile has a nasty habit of declaring war on the New World nations, even if they can't win them. And the bonuses to your armies can be necessary. Make your ruler immortal with the incorruptible modifier to reduce the burden of the too many territories again, and the expansionist modifier to more rapidly colonize the trade company regions and the Caribbean. Choose your religion. If you want to go for the Fort Odin achievement, you can select the Norse religion. Make sure you are a western tech group so that you can start with level 3 tech and superior troops to your neighbors. Load into the game, close the window that's left over from the exploit, and relaunch. Now plop down your first colonies and set it to speed 5. Your income and force limit will skyrocket, so by the time you reach your native neighbors, you'll be able to obliterate them. Keep it at speed 5 until you're decently ahead of time and technology, and force develop the renaissance. You can choose your capital, but by this time your nation is not large enough to receive much benefit from the development cost reduction for developing your capital province, so choose something with cloth, cotton, or that's a farmlands, or with the least amount of negative modifiers for developing the institution. For your first ideas, take exploration and expansion. You'll need both of these to rush the colonization of the Caribbean before the colonizers arrive. This is the primary trade node where you'll be making most of your money. You'll want to prioritize colonizing this at all costs. Eventually, you'll want to be collecting here and trying to get 100% control of the node so that no wealth flows back to the Europeans. After these two ideas, take whatever you think will best help you meet your goal. I took trade ideas in this run, but a military idea group will help you beat the Europeans and take land in Iberia. Periodically, make sure that you are investing in workshops and manufactories. These buildings combined give the best bonuses to province income. Also make sure to state up provinces with centers of trade and upgrade them to boost your economy. By 1600 or shortly after, you should control the span of both continents and meet your 500 ducat of income goal. The Siberian Frontier strategy makes you extremely powerful extremely quickly. But the economic snowball isn't as strong as the one in this strategy. In this strategy, we're going to begin in Australia and colonize our way to the Malacca trade node. Here, we're simply going to use the exploit to go over the point limit to help us get an immortal ruler, stack administrative ideas beyond the allowable limit, as well as choose two colonists and admin efficiency, which are expensive ideas. It is completely viable to use this strategy without the use of exploits to get the achievement by choosing only one of the colonists, or choosing to leave other ideas at level 1 instead of 4. First, select a 3 development province in Australia. I recommend Camilleroy instead of Burungum because it's drylands, and less expensive to develop. For your traditions, select development cost reduction and two colonists. The reason we are choosing development cost reduction is because we are going to have to develop our province to both spawn the renaissance and be able to afford our colonists. In your ideas, take global settler increase and construction cost reduction. The rest of the ideas are up to you. You can take bonuses to military ideas and admin efficiency like I did, but it's completely unnecessary. Choose whichever ideas you'd like. I won't even be getting that much value out of the core cost reduction I took just because we're going to be colonizing trade company regions and not using our states. Give yourself an immortal ruler with the expansionist and architectural visionary modifiers. Stacking construction cost reduction and settlers is important to your success here. For your culture, choose the Malayan culture to get the most bonuses from having the same culture as the provinces you'll be conquering. Having provinces of a different culture than your accepted cultures give negative modifiers to manpower, tax, and unrest. For your religion, if you want to be the most efficient, choose Sunni. This will allow you to take an extra 10% development cost reduction at the start of the game, as well as propagate your religion in the trade company areas. If you don't already have it, you'll be able to easily get the hard bargaining achievement this way. When you're satisfied, load into the game, close out of the leftover menu, and relaunch to begin playing. Select the repressive native policy for the bonus 20 settler increase, to speed up your colonization. From here, go speed 5 until the renaissance spawns. After which, Stack your development cost reduction from estates and state edicts, and develop the institution in your province. Now you should be making enough money to merit colonizing the surrounding provinces. Even if you take on a few loans to colonize, it won't matter as you'll pay them off rather quickly once your development and income increases. After you've colonized several states in Australia, begin expanding into the trade region. Prioritize the high development provinces first, and when you get the age bonus, be sure to select more developed colonies so that your development increases by 3 every time you finish a colony. 
When you feel strong enough, begin going to war with the smaller nations around you and begin taking that very high value juicy trade company land. You should be able to do this easily as long as you have naval superiority and build some heavy ships, as well as have a tech advantage since you spawned the institution and your neighbors did not. Periodically build workshops and manufactories in as many provinces as possible, and when your income increases start building local ventures and trade companies. These give an immediate boost to your income with no build time. After local ventures, prioritize harbors, which give the second highest boost to income, and it'll help push your trade node control to over 50%, giving you an extra merchant. After harbors, invest 1,000 ducats in townships under the foreign influence category. These give you 10% more trade value in each trade company, as well as a small bonus to army tradition, which helps keep your generals strong. Eventually, you'll beat up your neighbors and colonize every province, and your tech advantage and economy will allow you to even take on Ming. The achievement should be all but complete by the Age of Absolutism in 1600. The next two achievements are From Humble Origins, starting as a custom nation with no more than 50 points, have at least 2,000 total development, and First Come First Serve, starting as a Western Technology custom nation in North America or South America, with no more than 200 points, unite the two continents. We are going to be grouping these two achievements together. Though it is possible to complete Ideas Guy and For Odin alongside these two, it is much faster and easier to do these two separately using this method. Here we're going to use the exploit to give ourselves all the land in both continents. This will give us From Humble Origins immediately upon loading in the game. And we'll be able to get the first come first serve achievement when we colonize South Georgia. This South Atlantic island is the only province that the custom nation designer says is too far from our capital. Begin by opening the custom nation designer and selecting Panama as your starting province. Perform the first part of the exploit and select your ideas. We're going to be choosing colonial range and two colonists. The rest of the ideas don't matter because we are only going to play until we have the quest for the new world idea unlocked in the exploration idea group. Make sure that you set your country's technology to western to enable the first come first serve achievement, and double check that your custom nation difficulty is set to 50. Make your ruler a 666 immortal with incorruptible and start giving yourself every province in the new world. You'll be able to select every single province including Greenland, except for the island of South Georgia in the Atlantic. You'll even be able to select some provinces in Africa. When you're done, begin the game. You'll get From Humble Origins immediately upon loading in. You'll notice that you're not quite making money yet, but that's fine. When you go to speed 5, you'll automatically begin discovering sea tiles, and when you can, begin collecting in the Caribbean trade node. Set your focus to admin and continue on speed 5 until you have unlocked the exploration idea. Send your explorer to the South American Atlantic, and send your colonist to South Georgia. When he arrives, you'll get the achievement. These last three achievements are much more difficult than the previous ones, and I'll try to go into as much detail as possible about how I went about getting them. The first of the three I'll cover is Around the World in 80 Years. Starting as a custom nation of up to 400 points in the British region, own New York, San Francisco, Suez, Bombay, Calcutta, Hong Kong, and Yokohama by the 11th of November, 1524. This achievement is one that is completely doable without the use of exploits, if you follow the same method that I showcase here. To start, select London as your starting province and conduct the exploit. Give yourself a 666 Immortal Ruler with a strict and inspiring leader modifiers to help make your army strong enough to do this achievement quickly. In your traditions, take Colonial Range and Morale of Armies. We're going to be stacking as much morale as possible so our units can beat up on the countries with superior numbers, like Ashikaga, the Mamluks, Batmanis, Bengal, and Ming, without the help of our allies. For your next ideas, take two colonists, infantry combat ability, discipline, and one other military idea like siege ability or shock damage. This will let you start colonizing rapidly after unlocking the third exploration idea, and make your armies practically immortal. The rest of your ideas don't matter because the achievement is over in 1524, before you can unlock any of them. To add more power, we're going to be selecting the Shinto religion. This gives us another 10% morale of armies. If you want to do this achievement without exploits, instead, take something that looks like this. It's not necessary to have colonists in your ideas, it just helps speed things along. You'll have to beat up on the Irish miners in your downtime while you wait for exploration ideas or a good opportunity to no CB declare war on Morocco or Tlemcen. But it's not much different than what I did here in this run that I'm showing. When you're done with your ideas, select all of the land in the British region including Ireland, and begin the game. I start off doing typical things like assigning estates and demanding points, assigning advisors and rivals, and turning the game to speed 5. Our progress is contingent on our colonial range, and we want to get to Suez as fast as possible to extend that range to India. So I check my range in the map view and look for an opportunity to no CB declare war on either Tlemcen or Morocco. My goal here is to extend my range to get claims on Tunis and then the Mamluks. From here, it's speed 5 until I find the opportunity to declare war on Brittany to see if taking a few provinces from them will extend my colonial range a bit so I can declare on Tlemcen right away. This was an unnecessary war, but I had time to kill in a very strong troop, so I thought why not. 
I noticed that Morocco has finished their war with Tlemcen and is now in a prolonged conflict with Castile and Portugal. And their ally Granada won't back them up. They're already weakened, so it's a perfect time to declare that no CB best CB war. I piece them out for a few provinces on the coastline, one of which that I can core. I see that Tlemcen has no allies, so I quickly fabricate a claim on them and go to war again. This war is quick and easy, and I take a few more provinces. And now I'm bordering Tunis. I fabricate a claim on them as well, and since they don't have any friends either, I quickly declare war on them before they can get any. I got extremely lucky this run with the alliances that the Barbary countries had. If Tunis had allied the Ottomans, I would have had a much more difficult time dealing with them. Fortunately, we only need a few provinces, so even if they were, we'd be able to get enough war score and quickly piece them out. Now that I'm bordering the Mamluks, I'm ready to go to war again. After occupying Alexandria and Cairo, I have enough war score to piece out for four provinces, including Suez. From here, my plan is to snake across Arabia towards India. Unfortunately, during the time it takes for me to core my provinces, the Mamluks decide to diplo-vassalize Aniza, which would have to cause me to truce break to complete my plan. So I decided to wait the 10 years until my truce is up, and during this time I begin colonizing the Caribbean to give me colonial range on Manhattan and Panama. Colonizing Panama will allow me to colonize the province adjacent to it, which has a port on the Pacific side of the continent. This will eventually give me colonial range enough to get San Francisco. During this time, France also finishes off England. This allows me to take the click to let me form the English nation. This gives me access to all of the English mission tree, which I'm able to take clicks from for bonuses to settlers, as well as bonuses to morale, additional monarch points, and a whole lot more. At tech level 7, I'm able to take my second idea group, which is going to be defensive. The reason for this is primarily because of the bonus to morale from the second idea in the defensive tree. Stacking this on top of our already high morale, this just makes our troops extremely strong in the early game. When the truce is up, I declare war again, and I quickly peace out and make my snake to the Persian Gulf. I even call the Ottomans in for some extra help. Afterwards, I check to see that Batmanis is willing to sell me the province I need, but I'm sadly too short on cash. Outraged by this, I declare my second no CB war. Fortunately, Vijanagar was also unhappy with our blue friends and helped me out by declaring war of his own. The war was pretty quick, but I lost a lot of ships because I wasn't really paying attention, which was my bad. I'm able to peace out for Bombay and a Sri Lankan province to extend my colonial range. Now my eyes are on Bengal and Ming. I began colonizing Panama and see that my Manhattan colony is almost finished. While I'm waiting for my new boats to finish, I'm still colonizing and colonize the adjacent province to Panama. As I said earlier, this will give me colonial range for San Francisco. Because it's still the Age of Discovery, I use the claims off of Claims Age bonus to chain claims all the way from Sri Lanka to the Bengal Delta. Now that my ships are rebuilt, I declare my war in Bengal and finish it quickly. Then I immediately transport my troops to my colony on Taiwan to get ready for the Ming War. I was lucky and they passed a reform just as I was ready to fight them, making their troops much much weaker. I beat them up and take Canton. Now all that's left is the final no CB war against Ashikaga. During the war my colonist is San Francisco finally arrives, so piecing out earns me the achievement. Like I said at the beginning, you do not need to cheat to get this achievement. And as you can see, even without playing ideally, though I did use some exploits, I was able to get the achievement with 20 years to spare. We're almost done now, with only two more achievements to go. This next one, for Odin, was particularly challenging. Probably because I gave myself a hard start, even with these exploits. To earn this achievement, you must start as a Norse religion custom nation with no more than 200 points and a maximum of 5 provinces. Then you have to own and core Scandinavia and the British Isles and convert it all to Norse. This achievement probably wouldn't be too bad except for the limit on 5 provinces. I'm going to show you how I did this achievement, but keep in mind you'd probably be better off selecting 5 provinces in North America, and then using Siberian frontiers to grow strong and eventually invade Iceland and Ireland to start the Norse Crusade. To start off, I did an additional exploit that I featured on this channel before and removed all of the cores of England and France. This caused them to basically implode at the start of the game and made my conquest of them very easy. If you want to see how that works, I've linked the exploit guide at the end of this video. I then used the exploit to go over the custom nation point limit on top of that one. I gave my immortal ruler bonuses to discipline and morale, but looking back I should have taken the careful modifier for reduced aggressive expansion. I took three provinces around London as well as London itself, and one Irish province so that I can begin attacking the Irish miners when I started the game. My traditions were bonuses to infantry combat ability and morale. I knew that I'd have a lot of tough wars to start out the campaign with, since I had a lot of tough neighbors. 
So I postponed the core cost reduction and administrative efficiency until my second and third ideas. I took discipline in my first idea. And then later on, I took missionary strength and bonus missionaries plus two. I finished it off with siege ability and shock damage and artillery combat ability in my ambition. I started off by attacking the Irish miners to quickly grow my development with limited aggressive expansion. When England was losing terribly to rebels, I also declared war on them. They had so few troops that the war was easier than fighting the Irish. But I took too much land and triggered a coalition war involving almost every Irish miner, plus Brittany. I end up winning because of my superior troops and navy to make sure that mainland Europe does not land and win the war. Then in another war, I take the majority of the rest of Ireland, and Scotland doesn't like that very much and declares a war against me. I'm able to beat him up and separate him from picking on his little brother England. My own truce with England is almost up and I need to declare on them immediately before they can join the coalition, but going into war against them led Normandy and East Frisia to declare their own coalition wars against me, inviting Castile and their four PU subjects in Portugal, Aragon, Navarra, and Naples, as well as all of Burgundy. I'm able to gain some war score by letting some troops land and then immediately stack wiping them, and then sending my heavy ships to go hunt enemy fleets in the North Atlantic. I win after some time and peace out England. Brunswick and Scotland don't like that very much, and declare two more coalition wars against me. At this point, no navy can beat my own, so I decide to take most of Scotland and eat the rest of the coalition wars that are to come. I take more and more coalition wars and just shrug them off, buying down war exhaustion when I need to. After I defeat England, I'm able to take the decision to become them. This gives me the English mission tree and claims on the rest of the isles, as well as the Norwegian islands and Iceland. This gives me the perfect Casus Belli to go in against the Scandinavians. The religious ideas that I took first are kicking in and I'm able to convert rather quickly, and because France is so weak, I can't resist a free PU subject from the English missions. So I fabricate a claim and declare war for Co to complete my mission, and then piece them out after occupying Paris. In the meantime, I finish off Scotland, and when the truce is up with France, I'm able to restore the Union. Luckily, they just won a war with Burgundy and were able to take some land, so I waited for them to peace out before declaring my own war on them. Because France got beat up by everybody, they had a bit of reconquest, so I reclaimed some land from Brittany and then declared war with Castile once the truce ended with them. This stopped them from joining another coalition, which was really nice. Afterwards, I used my claims on Norway to go in against Denmark and took most of Norway for myself. From here, I could use Deus Vault to fight show superiority wars with my superior troops, and eventually I'm able to win a few more wars with Denmark and an independent Sweden to finish all my conquests. Then all I had to do was wait for two provinces to lose religious zeal from Protestantism in order to convert them and get the achievement. Again, I took a very hard route here, though it was extremely fun, you'd be better off just picking five provinces in North America and using Siberian frontiers to grow strong before heading to Europe to take on England and Denmark. The last achievement in this guide is Rekindling the Flames. This achievement is much easier than the last two. Starting as a Zoroastrian custom nation with no more than 200 points and a maximum of 5 provinces, rekindle the royal fires. This is a decision that Zoroastrian religion countries can take to get permanent modifiers. To take the decision, you must own these 7 provinces. Once you load into the game, you can see the decision available and click on the envelope to highlight the provinces. To start, I chose the 5 highest developed provinces in the Persia trade node between Karakinlu and Ajam. I knew that the Timurids would beat up Ajam early, so I was ready to declare an early easy war with my strong military traditions. In my traditions, I took morale of armies and infantry combat ability. And in my ideas, I took core cost reduction, discipline, admin efficiency, missionary strength, bonus missionaries, provincial war score cost, and war score cost reduction versus other religions. In my ambition, I took siege ability. With these ideas, I was able to take huge amounts of land and fight off any coalitions with my strong armies. I took religious, offensive, and quality ideas to give my troops laser rifles. After the first war with the Jom, it was a slow and easy grind to start converting and taking provinces from my neighbors. I pushed towards the Timurids and Ottomans in both directions, and fought a couple coalition wars along the way. I was severely outnumbered in all of these wars, but the strength of my troops and the power of my ideas kicked in, and my space marines had everything handled. When I had all seven provinces, I took the decision to rekindle the flames, as well as form Persia. If you made it this far, congratulations, and thanks for watching! I want to take a moment to give a big shout out to everyone who subscribed, watched, or given feedback to all of my videos in the past few months. Getting to a thousand subscribers so quickly was such an exciting thing to witness, and the EU4 community is super supportive. I hope you enjoyed this guide on custom nation achievements, and even if you're not a fan of exploits, I'm sure that you can get some value out of the strategies that I used here. I know that a lot of you have been asking for text versions of all of my exploit video guides, so stay tuned. I'm in the process of making text guides for each of my videos on my channel to put up on my website, and I'll make a community post when I'm finished. So if you did enjoy this and want to see more EU4 content, please consider subscribing down below. Leave a comment or just like the video. This has been another Ice Pyre Guide, and I'll see you next time.